title of this, I did wonder when I first saw it whether it was a typo, um, because we've been talking a lot about the end of the euro the last couple of years, and I thought, well, maybe we should have been adding an R and an O to that, and is this really the end of the EU? Is that, is that Google, once again, slightly pushing things a bit too far? But uh, obviously, uh, for a lot of people, the fate of the single currency, and certainly for a lot of people uh, closely involved with this project, uh, the euro has always been about the broader European project. It's always been about political integration in Europe, and in fact, some people, a, few, a handful of people here might remember that the first big report talking about the single currency in Europe, the Werner Report in 1970, actually was explicitly about using the single currency as a vehicle for moving the political integration of Europe forward. And in fact, you know, in the last chapter of that report, said almost as an aside, of course, you could never do a single currency without broader political integration because it just wouldn't work in the end. Well, that report was put aside. 30 years later, they did go in for the single currency. And uh, they're learning that lesson maybe again the hard way. I should say, actually, as the BBC's economics editor, I should rephrase that. Some would say they are learning that lesson the hard way with this crisis in the last couple of years, arguably. Because, of course, I don't have a view on this. Um, I mean, the euro is a great political drama, and it's turned out to be fantastic timing to be discussing us today because there are these grand meetings going on this week, concern about a new bailout for Greece, just as they're signing off on the first bailout for, uh, for Portugal. And I think we'll be getting into that, and we have some fantastic speakers to speak to that. But I hope we'll also be able to step back a little and think about the implications of this crisis for the euro for... Europe as an economy, Europe as a market for all of you. And I think as an example of a kind of project of a political integration among countries that maybe other countries in the world, other parts of the world were interested in and maybe wanted to follow. I think all of that's there, so I hope we can get into that. That's my first goal for this discussion. My second goal is to not get into what on earth was going on with Dominique Strauss-Kahn at the weekend, <laughs> but, uh, which of course is what really most people in Europe are thinking about uh, today. But uh, we have, I, I know I'm not going to have, uh, my main problem with this is going to be shutting people up, up here because they're all very good speakers, they're people who will be very lively on this subject. Um, we have uh, first on my left David McWilliams, who's uh, a former Irish banker and economist who, who left banking uh, too early to have his assets guaranteed by the Irish government. <laughs> and um, I suspect, you know, I, I always wonder whether that has something to do with the fact that he's railed against that guarantee ever since as a journalist and as a, as a writer as well. We have uh, Gabor Steingart, who's the editor-in-chief of uh, the very eminent gem German publication Handelsblatt. Uh, in Britain, we tend, to have, uh, we tend to be pretty clear on what the Germans think about this and German role in this. We don't often uh, make the mistake of asking German people what they actually think. We prefer to. So Google's not making that mistake today. And uh, Joseph Stiglitz, I think probably uh, of all the people here, doesn't need much introduction. A Nobel Prize winning economist at, now at Columbia University. One of many people who claim to have predicted the global financial crisis, but one of few who actually has a paper trail to prove that he predicted <laughs> the uh, crisis. And we have from the UK... Simon Wilson, CEO of the major fashion chain Next, who I guess for, for nearly 20 years has been deciding what an awful lot of British people are going to wear. And I think relevant to this discussion has been a long-standing critic of the European Union and the excessive regulation that it has sometimes produced for uh, UK and European business. Uh, the Chancellor, George Osborne, talked about the red tape challenge. I, was, I suspect that Mr Wilson thinks that we've not... Europe has failed the red tape challenge so far. 